This is Selma Schimmel, and you are looking live at the great city of Chicago, which is once again playing host to the American Society of Clinical Oncology, ASCO. This is ASCO's 49th annual meeting, and this year's theme could not be more appropriate, Building Bridges to Conquer Cancer. More than 30,000 of the world's foremost cancer specialists are here, and so is the group room, making our 15th appearance at ASCO and one of our very best. Joining me now is Dr. Benjamin Levy, Head of Thoracic Medical Oncology in the Division of Hematology Oncology at Beth Israel Hospital, Continuum Cancer Centers of New York, and Assistant Professor of Medicine at Albert Einstein College of Medicine. Welcome back, Dr. Levy. Thank you for having me. We're going to talk about lung cancer from a perspective, though, of all of these enormous pathways that are so prevalent in lung cancer and really becoming, it's sort of shining the light for all the other cancers. And it's such so beautiful because lung cancer has been a very dark disease. Mm -hmm. And it's not like that anymore. Yeah, I think we're entering an incredible age and we're just at the ground floor of this genomic driven oncology. Um, 10 years ago, uh, not even being able to uh, identify the mutations that are responsible in lung cancer for lung cancer growth. And now with the advent of uh, testing and what's now called next generation sequencing, being able to sequence the entire genome, we're able to come up with or identify uh, other mutations that are responsible for cancer growth so that we can develop drugs to target those pathways. So I think we're in a very exciting time and it's a good uh, good time to be in thoracic oncology. Why don't we do this is retrospective and prospective yeah. look at where we're of the landscape. Right. The way that uh, I can frame this is where we were, where we are, and where we're going. Uh, if we look back uh, just 10 or 15 years ago in lung cancer we had just two mutations or just one mutation that actually we could act upon. Uh, and that mutation was EGFR. Um, and that's where we, sit for, we, we sat for quite a while. Um, with the development of, of better testing uh, and the technology that's become available, um, we now have the ability uh, to identify multiple mutations. Uh, and currently, we have two approved drugs for EGFR, which is erlotinib uh, and gefitinib, uh, and for ALK, another mutation, uh, we have the drug crizotinib. Um, and that's where we are now. And if we look in the future and where we're heading, uh, there are multiple other mutations, that driver mutations that are responsible solely for cancer growth in lung cancer. And the attempt is, is really uh, to develop drugs against these other mutations. For instance, uh, presented at ASCO last year and this year are the mutations in RET, uh, mutations in MET, uh, mutations in BRAF. Uh, a mutation that was thought to be just exclusively in melanoma, which is in lung cancers as well, which we've been able to develop drugs against. As you learn more and more in this sequencing of these pathways and genomic mutations of tumors, how many do you actually test for right. today? So I think it's a very important question and routinely, and it's, it's institution dependent. And this just tells you that we haven't come to a consensus on exactly how many mutations we should be testing for and how to test for them. Um, currently at my institution, we're routinely testing for three mutations. One is EGFR, the second is ALK. And if patients have those mutations, they're candidates for oral targeted drugs. The third mutation we test for routinely is KRAS. And uh, part of the reason we're testing for KRAS is, is my own research looking at KRAS and, and trying to determine sensitivity to chemotherapy. Outside of those three, um, we don't routinely test for other mutations. However, in the next few years, I think we will begin to test for more mutations that are responsible for cancer growth. Today, how many would we be capable, even if you don't have corresponding therapies, but how many? So with um, Snapshot technology, you can test for about 13 to 15 mutations, and then next generation sequencing, which is sequencing the entire genome, the sky is the limit. 
and uh, you can test for over 100, 200 mutations. Uh, with next generation sequencing, which is basically uh, trying to understand all of the DNA that's in the cancer, uh, the average amount of mutations that are in lung cancer is around 100 to 200. That's average. Now, what to do with all those mutations, it's unclear. Uh, the, the positive that comes out of this is that once you begin to routinely see other mutations that may drive cancer growth, that leads to better clinical drug development against those mutations. What is the reason for not testing for more than the three that you, like your institution tests I, for? I think that we are at a crossroads. Um, this next generation sequencing is what's what's called the $1,000 test with a $100,000 interpretation. Uh, it gives you the information, but the complexity of what to do with that information is where we sit right now uh, and how to face that complexity. Um, these are available to patients. Uh, a company called Foundation is one of the companies that, that does this, and it's, it's, it's available for any patient, you don't, and sometimes covered by insurance. If patients don't have mutations in the first three that are tested, I don't think it's unreasonable to consider testing for these other mutations so that these patients may have another mutation that they could be referred to a clinical trial or a trial that's in development looking at a specific drug against a mutation that's not routinely tested for. So I think that's where the value is. Thank you. You have a very, I, I have a sense that you have a very special, gentle way in, in dealing with your patients. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Dr. Benjamin Levy, head of thoracic medical oncology in the division of hematology oncology at Beth Israel Hospital, Continuum Cancer Centers of New York, and assistant professor of medicine at Albert Einstein. College of Medicine. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Levy.